Good morning students. Today we will study about the excretory system of cockroach. The excretory system of cockroach mainly is a system which is concerned with the elimination of the nitrogenous waste material and in case of cockroach it is in the form of the uric acid. The organs which are the main or excretory organ is the malpagian tubules. Apart from these fat body, cuticle and nephrocytes are also involved in the excretion of the nitrogenous waste. First of all, the malpagian tubule. Malpagian tubule is usually found between the junction of the midgut and the hindgut. The malpagian tubules are fine, unbranched, yellow tubes that lie more or less free in the hemocyl. They open into the elementary canal at this junction of the midgut and the hindgut. Their free end is closed, whereas this end is open, which opens at this junction. They occur in six groups with about 12 tubules. These are the six groups with about 12 tubules in each group. Each tubule is lined by the brush border, cuboidal epithelium of large glandular cells. These are the glandular cells, cuboidal. And these cells have characteristic brush border. They are surrounded by elastic connective tissue and they rest on a basement membrane. This is the basement membrane. This is the brush border, these are the glandular cells and this is the lumen and this is the basement membrane. This is the tears of the malpagian tubule. Now what happens is that each malpagian tubule has two regions. This is the distal half and this is the proximal half. Distal half secretes ions, uric acid and amino acids from the hemolymph into its lumen. Hemolymph from it into its lumen. The water enters passively as a result of active transfer because the concentration is higher and as a law, the water moves from the region where the solute concentration is low to the region where solute concentration is high. As a result, the water enters passively as a result of active transport of ions. The region is alkaline. From here, the extracted materials moves in solution which is the primary urine towards the ileum. This is the ileum region. The proximal part of the tubule passes carbon dioxide from the hemolymph into its cavity and as carbon dioxide enters it increases the acidic content of the fluid which is present inside this tubule. Ions, water and useful materials are partly reabsorbed in this part changing the primary uni urine into the final urine. There's a circulation of water and ions occurs during the excretory process. By gentle contraction of the tubule, the precipitate is carried into the elementary canal. Basically, when the entry of the carbon dioxide occurs in this region, the uric acid precipitates. This precipitate is then moved by the gentle contraction of the tubules. In the hindgut, more water and ions are absorbed and as a result, the uric acid which requires a very less amount of water to be expelled out of the body is released or excreted out of the body. And the animals which release nitrogenous waste material in the form of uric acid are referred to as uricotelic animals. And this process is called as uricotelic excretion. Then comes the fat body. Fat body is basically in case of adipose tissue, there are uric acid is stored in special cells in adipose tissue and these this type of excretion is referred to as excretion by storage. Then the cuticle. Cuticle is basically the outermost layer which is removed with each molting. An excess of salt and waste material gets deposited in the cuticle and as a result of molting they are also expelled out of the body. Lastly, they are the nephrocytes and pericardial cells. They are the bi large binucleated cells which are present on the dorsal diaphragm. They take waste material from the blood by pinocytosis and store it in their cytoplasm. This was about the excretory system. This cockroach is basically, it does not take any water, rather than it loses water. So to overcome this loss of water, what it does is, it, uh, it closes the spiracles when there is no requirement for this. My, most of the spiracles remain closed. And the, this basically the spiracles are involved in the loss of the water by evaporation. Some water leaves the body with the excretory and the fecal matter. Therefore, it requires the water balance, maintenance of the water balance. 
The vaccine impermeable epicuticle checks the surface evaporation. The excretion of nitrogenous waste material as uric acid also reduces the loss of water as uric acid requires very low amount of the water to be expelled out of the body. And reabsorption of water by the rectum conserves the body water. And also the water which is produced by the oxidation of the carbohydrate is also absorbed by the body. Next comes the nervous system. Nervous system is the system which is involved in bringing about the coordinated movements of the body uh, and bringing about the reaction to the different kinds of stimulus. Nervous system in case of cockroach has three parts, the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system. First the central nervous system. Central nervous system is formed of, uh, central nervous system consists of the supraesophageal ganglion which is also referred to as cerebral ganglion or brain. This is formed by the fusion of the three pairs of ganglion and it has three parts. The forebrain, pro protocerebrum, midbrain, deutocerebrum, hindbrain, tritocerebrum. This is the supraesophageal ganglion because it lies in the head region and that too above the esophagus therefore it is referred to as supraesophageal ganglion. It is formed by the fusion of the three pairs of ganglions. This is the supraesophageal ganglion, this region. Uh, then comes the subesophageal ganglion. Subesophageal ganglion lies also lies in the head region. It is present beneath the esophagus, therefore it is referred to as the subesophageal ganglion. Like supraesophageal ganglion, it is also formed of three pairs of ganglion. Then comes the uh, circumesophageal connectives. These are the circumesophageal connectives which connect the supraesophageal ganglion with the subesophageal ganglion. And as a result, a ring is formed around the esophagus. Then comes the nerve cord. This is the nerve cord. It starts from the subesophageal ganglion and runs backward through the thorax and abdomen beneath the alimentary canal. It is solid, double and midventral. It bears nine segmental ganglion, three in the thorax region and six in the abdominal region. Uh, in nine ganglion, three thoracic ganglion and six abdominal ganglia. The three thoracic ganglions are these which lie in each of the thoracic segment. This, uh, this is the prothorax region, mesothorax region, metathorax region. The ganglion which is present in the prothorax segment is referred to as the prothoracic ganglion. This is the mesothoracic ganglion and this is the metathoracic ganglion. These are the three abdominal segments and the nerve cord has nine ganglions three in the thorax and six in the abdominal region one two three four five six these six abdominal ganglions lies in the first second third fourth sixth and seventh segment these are the abdominal ganglions then comes the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system basically involves all the nerves which arises from the central nervous system so if we will start first with the brain this is brain uh, brain basically there are three pair of nerves that arises from the brain these are the optic nerves this this nerve this first nerve is the optic nerve which innervates the compound eyes and join the protocerebrum then the antennary nerve which supplies the antenna and meet the deutocerebrum which is the middle part of the brain and then lastly the labrofrontal nerve this is the labrofrontal nerve uh, which then soon divides into the labral nerve this is the labral nerve which innervates the labrum and the, sec uh, the second one is the frontal connective that joins the frontal ganglion this is the frontal ganglion it joins the frontal ganglion of the autonomic nervous system then the nerves from the subesophageal ganglion it gives the mandibular nerves these are the mandibular nerves that innervates the mandibles these are basically the mouth parts the labrum mandible maxilla and labium this is the upper lip and these are the lower lip mandible and maxilla then it gives the maxillary nerves which innervates the maxilla. Then the labial nerves which distributes to the labia. Then comes the segmental ganglion. The ganglions which are present in each segment, the thorax region and the abdominal region uh, are the segmental ganglion. They give uh, several pair of nerves to the different segments. Uh, the prothoracic ganglion gives prothoracic nerves to the prothorax region. Mesothoracic ganglion gives mesothoracic nerves to the mesothorax region. Metathoracic ganglion gives rise to the metathoracic nerves to the metathoracic region. Apart from this, the abdominal segment gives different kinds of work. 
different uh, nerves to the different body regions this metathoracic ganglion apart from supplying the nerves to the metathorax region also gives the nerve to the first abdominal segment which is represented by the red this second abdominal segment second third fourth fifth sixth they give two pair of nerves in each segment each of the first five abdominal ganglion gives off a pair of nerves each dividing into two branches this is the pair of nerve and each divide into two branches these nerves run backward and supply the second third second third fourth fifth and sixth abdominal segment the sixth abdominal ganglion this which is present in the seventh segment it gives off three branches these these are the three branches one two three these three branches or these gives off three pairs of the nerves to the seventh eighth and the ninth segment it also sends thick nerves to the circus then comes the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system consists of three parts the esophageal ventral and the caudal part first the esophageal part esophageal part basically consists of few ganglion and connectives first is the frontal ganglion this is the frontal ganglion this frontal ganglion is situated on the esophagus just in front of the brain it is connected with the brain by a branch which is called as frontal connective this is the frontal connective with which it is connected to the brain this is brain this is the frontal ganglion it is connected by the frontal connectives to the brain uh, it gives off two median nerves the frontal and recurrent this is the frontal nerve and this is the recurrent nerve this recurrent nerve joins to the other ganglion which is the occipital ganglion so the second part of the autonomic nervous system esophageal part is occipital ganglion occipital ganglion lies on the esophagus behind the brain it from it arises two arises three nerves two lateral and one median these are the two lateral and one median these two lateral uh, nerves meet the corpora cardica the endocrine gland and the median nerve runs backward over the esophagus and joins the ingluvial ganglion its two lateral nerves meet the corpora cardica the endocrine gland and the median nerve joins the other ganglion which is called as ingluvial ganglion ingluvial ganglion is the third part it lies on the crop and is fairly large ganglion from it a pair of nerve proceeds backward over the alimentary canal these are the pair of nerves then comes the ventral part of the autonomic nervous system this ventral part basically consists of longitudinal nerve from the nerve cord it gives off in each segment a pair of nerves to the spiracles then is the caudal part caudal part the nerve from the last abdominal segment supplies the hind part of the gut and the reproductive system this is the caudal part of the autonomic nervous system then comes the sense organs uh, in case of cockroach the sense organs for all the five senses is in case of cockroach the sense for touch taste smell and hearing are simple sensory and that for the sight are the complex compound eyes to so sensory uh, for all the four senses the touch taste and smell smell and hearing is of the same basic structure it consists it has a seta which is attached to the trichogen cells with which it is it is formed it has a membrane articulating membrane attached to it it is fixed into a socket covered by the cuticle it is surrounded by the epidermis cell and it has a sensory cell this sensory cell is bipolar it has two endings one is attached to the articulated membrane and the other forms the nerve fiber which is connected to the central nervous system so whenever there is a stimulus either the touch or the wind uh, this gets stimulated and as a result the nerve impulse is carried from this region which is connected to the articulating membrane to the other region which is the nerve fiber to the central nervous system for the reaction the tactile sensilla that is the touch sensilla are found all over the body but especially on the antenna tibia of legs and cerai gustatory sensilla sensilla that is for the taste are present on the tips of maxilla 
and the labial parts and on the epipharynx olfactory sensilla that is for the smell lie on the antenna and the pals those are the antennas that perceive smell from the distance while those on the pals perceive it from the close quarters the chemoreceptors that is gustatory and olfactory these two which depends on the chemical signals have very thin cuticle which is kept moist by the glandular secretion lastly the auditory or the hearing sensilla these sensilla for hearing are located on the anal cerci the antenna perhaps also bear sensilla for the humidity and the temperature